What's up everybody, it's your boy Noah. If it's your first time here, I make cool videos on tech and tips to help improve your health and creativity. And today is Q&A day where I basically put on my Instagram stories, I let everybody know, ask me whatever questions you want, whether it's on health, fitness, creativity, passion projects, side hustles, entrepreneurship, the whole nine yards, and I just answer them. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get it started. First question, I have a high metabolism and have a hard time putting on weight. What things can I do? Eat. I am telling you right now, eating is your biggest problem why you are not maintaining any type of muscle. These are like hard gainers. It's like the typical textbook term or somebody who just burns more calories just on a daily basis because they're typically a lot skinnier, they're a lot thinner framed. And they usually have the opposite problem of a lot of people where when they don't eat, they lose a lot of weight and they end up looking skinny and frail. And the biggest solution to this is actually eating more. And you might think that you eat a lot, but you might just eat a lot in one meal. You don't eat a lot throughout the whole entire day. So the first thing I tell people is take a log of what you're eating throughout the day. You don't have to do this for like a month, just do it for like a week or two and just every single meal, log it. I use MyFitnessPal, it's a really good tracker. Or you can write it down, put notes in your phone, but literally see how much that you eat in a day. And you'll be surprised how much is really not a lot of food that you're eating. And then once you do that, you can just kind of work from there. You just add maybe a snack or a meal um, at a time that you usually don't. I know a lot of people say eat every two to three hours, but really just whenever you can get an extra meal in, try to get that extra meal and see how that changes your body frame and you know gaining muscle after that. But ideally, you're just not eating enough food. Second question. What do you think is the biggest barrier that millennials face when starting a journey? Huh, this is a good question. I think the biggest barrier that millennials face is false expectations of what they think they should do. And I fall into this as well. Like, you know, as millennials, we feel like we have to like achieve something great and we have to do it in such a short amount of time. So we expect quick successes. And I found out the hard way that this is just not the case. I've had coaches, I've had mentors, and it's funny, I'm definitely nowhere near the success that I wish that I was at. But then that's the problem because we're focusing too much on the success rather than the journey. And I think that's the biggest barrier. Millennials are so focused on the end goal, but they're not focused on that process from A to B to C. We just want to get C. We just want to get Z, really. We just want Z, but we don't want to respect the rest of the alphabet to get there. So I think really that's the biggest barrier and that's what gets us into our own way is respecting the process, loving the journey, and honestly just patience. Gary Vee says that a lot, but I definitely think that's a big barrier. What are some foods or snacks that help with stomach fat loss? <sighs> this seems to be like a big thing for a lot of people. It's like, how do I lose stomach fat? You either sit in one or two camps or really just both camps when you are trying to lose like stomach fat. You're either eating way too much or you're not doing any type of activity throughout the day or you're doing both. So what ends up happening is the weight starts to pile on and the first place it goes is the stomach, is the gut, and then it will follow through everywhere else. I think the best foods and snacks really are gonna be fruits and vegetables. The reason why I say that, they are low calories. You can eat a ton of them and they still won't probably equal like a you know, a cup of like pasta. And I'm not saying pasta is unhealthy, but again, if you're trying to think of healthy foods and snacks that kind of aid you in that process of losing that stomach fat, you need to eat lower calorie foods. And then again, you gotta move. You gotta keep doing activity, whether it's working out on a consistent basis, going to a class, moving throughout the day, move, 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 move and then also eat healthy. Again, the best foods I think are vegetables and fruits and that will kind of help you stay on the low calorie end. Next question, what motivated you to write your book? Ooh, I like this, one second, let me get it. So this right here is the book that I wrote, I think in 2017. Um, it's called Millennials No Excuses. Um, I wrote this book because I really had just so much information and knowledge that I wanted to share, but I wanted to do it in a very consumable way. So I created this book, I think it's like 70 something pages. I was actually surprised that I did this and it went everything over like nutrition, everything about carbs, proteins, fats. Then I went to like tips to staying healthy when traveling. Basically everything that all my clients had asked me about, I just put it in a book so you know it can make it easier one for me to hand it out to other people but then two just a, a good way for for me to kind of keep all my knowledge in one spot so I actually haven't promoted that much so if you're interested in it I will be happy to send it to you um, but yeah this was a very fun project of mine and uh, yeah I wrote a book so that felt cool 
is meat really bad for you? This is a tough subject, again, because again, you have a ton of vegetarians, you got a lot of vegans out there. I personally don't think meat is a unhealthy food or bad food for you. Now, whatever values and whatever beliefs that you have, whether you know it's about animals and all that, like by all means, I respect that. I just wanna say in context of this question, meat and animal proteins actually have the highest complete proteins that your body needs, like the amino acids. I don't wanna to get too technical, but basically the highest quality proteins that you need are in animal proteins and meats. So no, I would say meats are not unhealthy, but again, if it's something that, you know, whether it's religious beliefs or whether it's personal beliefs, um, a personal choice. If you can't eat meat, there's a ton of plenty other options that you can get protein. You have beans, you have tofu, um, nuts, seeds. You have so many other ways that you can get protein in. But in general, I don't think meat proteins are naturally bad for you. I know there's a lot of thing about red meat. Really, anything is too bad for you if you have it outside of moderation. So just keep that in mind. I always tell people before I give them like dietary things, see how it feels. Like for a lot of people, like milk is a crazy thing. Like, oh, don't drink dairy. Dairy is so unhealthy. I don't drink dairy not because it's unhealthy. It's because it messes with my stomach and messes with my digestive system. That's why I don't drink milk. So if you eat meat and it bothers your stomach or, you know, you don't feel so good afterwards, don't eat meat, find another substitute for that. Um, but in general, meat is, I would say, is not unhealthy, it's not bad for you. What to you is the hardest part about starting your own brand? I think it's two things. I think one's really typical, but I think the other is really important. But I think the first hardest part about starting your brand is actually thinking of an idea. This is a big thing because people want a piece of the pie now. They see people are starting their own brands or whether it's fitness, whether it's like, I don't know, traveling. They just see all these people doing all these different things and like, well, I wanna start a brand or I wanna start a business, what should I do? I tell people the hardest part is figuring out what it is that you should do. And how you solve this is looking at two, one of two things. Look at what you're really good at or look at what you really love. Now, typically the one that you really love is something that you'll be super passionate about, but might take a little bit longer because you might not know too much about it from an expertise standpoint. And then on the other end, you might be really good at, and really knowledgeable about something, but you might not be as passionate as if something that you love. It's a hard balance to figure, figure out between the two, but I would say that would be the first steps to figuring out what it should be. For me, for example, I liked fitness. I was really good at it. I ended up getting health coach certifications. I ended up working with like 20 or 30 something clients and I got really, really good at it. So that's why I'm kind of doing what I'm doing now when it comes to like, you know, health coaching and putting out health and fitness content and stuff like that. Um, I think the second hardest part is starting. So once you have an idea, people think they need to have everything that they need to do to get started. And it's so funny because I, I think about how when I started my journey, I literally just bought like a little point and shoot camera. Now I got like this whole setup where it's like, I have like a reflector right here, a light right here. It's knowing that you just need to start. If you want a podcast, literally take your phone, record your voice and go find a way to put it on like Apple iTunes. If you want to start like a YouTube channel, just take your phone, talk to the video, I mean, talk to the camera and just riff and post that video on social media and just do it. A lot of people try to make it perfect. They try to plan it out. You're afraid of what's gonna, how it's gonna be received. So it just takes longer. You just, you feel like you're like, oh, I'm busy. I'm working towards it. I need a logo. I need all this different stuff. I need to get a top of the class video and you really don't. You just need to start with the bare basics, get started with the consistency, comes the reps, comes the quality, and then that's how you get better. Um, I'm going to end it right here. I hope you guys really enjoyed this Q&A. If you have more questions for me, go ahead and put them in the comment box below. Or if you're on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and put those in the comments below the caption and ask away or DM me. Just ask me questions, whether it's about fitness, health, and I will be happy to answer them and put them on this Q&A for you. So I hope this video was helpful. I'll catch you later. You already know. Embrace the hype.